Okay, so here's a suggestion from uh, one of the viewers, and uh, I thought it was an interesting idea. So he was asking, I, I was doing a neutron generators with different materials, and uh, let's take a look here. This is a source that I got of a uh, industrial strength smoke detector. Uh, it's uh, I think it was 80 microcuries or something. Here, let's. It's pretty hot, and it's a source of high energy alpha. And uh, alpha particles carry a lot of momentum, and uh, they can be used to uh, induce fusion reactions, which, if you have the right materials, uh, will produce neutrons. Oh man, this thing. Okay, so this is some lithium that I took out of a lithium battery, and I had a video on how to do that. That's a little bit dangerous, but anyway, let me just take... I'm wearing a glove because lithium will probably turn into lithium hydroxide and can burn you. So I don't want to get burned from the lithium. So I'm going to cut a little strip of the lithium with the scissors. Okay. And I try to keep it uh, in the sealed container because moisture uh, as you can see, oxidize the lithium. It's all turned black. It was not black when I got it out. Okay. Yeah, put, put the lithium away. And so we have a piece of lithium. And uh, here's our source. And just want to make sure one side is... You know, the alphas only go through like a sheet of paper. So you want to make sure you have the alphas pointing in the right direction. Okay, so that's the hot side, it looks like. There's a lot more alphas coming off that way. Okay. So we want to have this side up, and I'm going to put the lithium on top of that. Okay. But let me, uh, I think I'm going to tape the whole thing together. Well, let's do this, actually. Let me take a piece of tape, and I'm going to put the americium on there, like so, okay, and the only reason why I'm wearing the gloves, I'm not scared of the radiation, because this is nothing, i put the lithium on top of that, I just don't want to, I guess I can touch the lithium too, okay, so, Let's tape these two things together. Okay. And there is our neutron generator, hopefully. And uh, here's our bubble detector, neutron bubble detector. It's kind of a neat device. I bought these a while back. And they're only supposed to be calibrated for three months, and I think we're on the cusp of that. But hopefully they should still work fine. And, uh, okay, so the way this works, it has some kind of liquid in there. It's like a bubble chamber almost. It's like a gel. And when you decompress it, you unscrew this thing on the back. And that decompresses the cylinder in the front here. Okay. And then it's able to uh, have bubbles in there. And then when you recompress it, you force the bubbles back out so you can reuse it. So here is our bubble detector. And I'm going to take our piece of tape here. Yeah, I'm just gonna take our little neutron generator that we made. And I think I'll just tape it right the side of our bubble detector here. Like so. Okay. And you're supposed to let these run for about 24 hours, so I'll just set this guy aside. And, um, we will see if we get any bubbles in there or not. Okay? Should be an interesting experiment. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned before, this is a request from someone in the comments. And I thought it was a good idea, so let's go for it. Okay? Okay, so I've been running this, uh, this uh, possible neutron source. It was a su suggestion from a viewer uh, with uh, one of my um, americium um, 
any microcurie sources from an industrial smoke detector and I have it sh uh, bombarding alpha particles onto a piece of lithium that I took out of a lithium battery and let's take a look and see if we can find any uh, find any bubbles in the sky let me uh, let me remove this I taped uh, those two sources together of course I didn't put tape in between them because you don't want the alpha particles won't go through tape so I have these taped right next to each other and um, We'll see if we can find any bubbles. And let me take a look here. I'm not really seeing any bubbles in there. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these, uh, it's not a bubble, is it? These sources are only guaranteed to be calibrated for three months, and I think I'm a little bit outside of that. I don't know how much they would be off by then. But what I could do, just to test the calibration as I could run this with my uh, beryllium source which I did another video on before and uh, could see if uh, that produces neutron or this that produces bubbles still just to make sure that uh, this is valid I don't know if you can see in there I'm not really seeing any bubbles in there just tiny ones but it's supposed to be a big one if, if it's actual neutrons there's some blemishes on the outside plastic, but those aren't bubbles either. Okay, so that it looks like it might be a null run there. Okay, so maybe I'll hook up the beryllium source and try that. Okay, just to be fair about things, I'll recompress this guy, even though there's no bubbles in there. And, uh... And I'll uncompress them again. And we have our, oh, well, let's see, beryllium source right here, americium beryllium source. And I have those taped together. And I got bubbles with this before. And so let me, um, I think I'll just tape that to this guy. I'll uncompress them again. And usually you're supposed to leave it for a while if there's bubbles there, but there was no bubbles. I could see. Okay, let me set that guy down, and I get some tape here. And here's a nifty trick that someone showed me once. If you fold over the end of the tape, then it doesn't get stuck down hopelessly to something you don't want it to be stuck down forever to. And uh, try to do this without breaking anything. Okay, and of course I'm taping the part with the americium source closest to this guy, and I'll let this run for another 24 hours, and we will see if we get any bubbles from the beryllium source compared to the lithium. Okay, that should be interesting. Okay, so here's our beryllium source. I wanted to just retest the detector with that to make sure the detector's working right because it's kind of getting toward the end of its calibration period. And look at that. Actually, maybe the calibration's become a little bit more sensitive. I count one. Can you see that? One, two and a third bubble up there so definitely the detectors working I'm gonna look at the uh, lithium source and make sure that I have the alpha particles pointing toward the lithium source and maybe we'll rerun that again but here's our beryllium source with the americium and it looks like it definitely produced several large bubbles in there and I didn't see that with the uh, lithium source lithium americium source Okay, very interesting. So that was a null test, and I'm going to look into that a little bit more to make sure I have everything set up right. I still have the thing ta taped up. I'm going to test it and see how that works out. Okay. okay, here's our lithium source, and I'm just going to look it over one more time to make sure I didn't put this in backwards or something. It does, never hurts to recheck, right? Oh, look at that lithium. It turned completely powdered white. It's been 
oxidizing. Okay, so see this side here, the shiny side up. Okay. This is the side that was facing toward the lithium. Okay. And we take it down here. Okay, so that's the way it behaves there. Let me um, just take a piece of paper here. Let me get a piece of paper because alpha particles are stopped by paper. So, see that? I put the paper in front and it knocks out most of the radiation. So it was definitely in the right polarity. Um, maybe it had a lot of oxide in there because... Uh, Look at that, that's uh, really turned into like probably lithium hydroxide there, just from being in the, the air. It's just completely turned into a white powder. But it looks like we had our experiment set up properly. And um, it's definitely, this is definitely putting out a lot of radiation. So, oh, shit. Okay, there we go. I don't know what I dropped on the floor, but Geiger counter is still working. Okay, so it was definitely facing the right direction, and uh, the uh, alpha particles did not produce a significant amount of uh, fusion neutrons. So the conclusion is is that uh, alpha or americium uh, lithium is not a good source for neutrons. Anyway. Um, Thank you for watching. This is Dr. James, and let's see. Thanks for watching.